These import TIG welders and multi-process welders just keep getting better. This is not the first time that I've done a review of a inverter style TIG machine, but this one is I think a little different. This one has a really unique feature that I think is gonna be really helpful for TIG welding thin sheet metal as a beginner. I've taught a few in-person classes with TIG welding thin sheet metal and planishing and making body repairs. The one pain point is getting the puddle started, especially if the panels aren't touching. The energy just tends to erode the seam and it's hard to get started. This one has a quick pulse method that I think is gonna be really helpful if you're a beginner. So stay tuned, let's check this one out. I'm excited. They keep getting smaller. This machine is only 160 amps, but that's okay, because for welding auto body stuff, we're typically in the 20 to 40 range. It's plenty strong enough for working on your car. And like I said, this is a multi-process welder, so we're primarily gonna be playing with the TIG functions today, but it also is a MIG welder, which is this tip right here, and it's also a plasma cutter, which is super cool. Actually, this goes here because we want electrode negative for steel. So that means the ground clamp, which is this, is positive. So we're connected to 220 volts right there to my wall. And we want to get into TIG mode, so let's, let's find TIG mode. Here's TIG right here, and we can adjust our current. So we want to be somewhere down here around 28, 29 amps. So no filler, this is high frequency start, so you don't need to lift. You basically just get it to the surface. I like to keep the tungsten, you know, very close. And then it's just, uh, hit the trigger. All right, that was our first weld, uh, two pieces together. And you know, it's great. All the way through the metal, this is 20 gauge. So I could do this all day long and would be absolutely perfect on your car. This was a tight fitting gap, so it's starting to close in on itself. So we just stretch it back out with the hammer and dolly. So now we have our panels fitting again with the zero gap that we started. All right, this welder works just fine at welding 20 gauge steel together. This would be a great weld if it was on your car, an exterior body panel, whatever. This is 100% penetrated, needs very little grinding, and it's clean on both sides. That was 29 amps DC electrode negative. The, uh, Argon flow rate is 15. That's it for the settings. Right out of the box, it worked great. But that's not what I wanna try, and that's not the, uh, the best feature of this welder. It works just fine as a regular TIG welder. The feature I wanna demonstrate is the, some people call it cold welding, but it's like a burst of energy that just fuses the metal together in a fraction of a second. So. That's not what I was doing on this one. I had the machine set to low amperage. I hit the trigger, it develops a puddle. It takes two to three seconds for the puddle to develop. 
and then I pull the puddle along the seam and it penetrates on both sides. That's a very traditional way to weld. But this machine, because it's an inverter machine, can just stab it with a high current in a short period of time. So let me try some of those. We'll get the machine adjusted and tell you how it'll help you as a beginner. Okay, the technique I'm trying is I'm just stabbing it with like 80 amps and that's able to get this weld started. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been experimenting up and down. That right there is done with nothing, more, nothing less than 80 amps. Let me get some new metal and we'll start fresh. These two pieces of metal are 20 gauge and they're gonna fit together you know, nice and tight. So I'm just gonna put them down here on the table and I'm gonna try to just tack those in place using high current and short pulse. So the machine's set to 80 amps, and the workpiece is, you know, same 20 gauge, and I'm just stabbing it, just to get the puddle started. What that does is it fuses both sides together, and it avoids the puddle from splitting into two. This is almost fully penetrated, but I wouldn't put this on your car. I think this is just a starting point. I think what I would do in this case, if this was a piece on my car, is I would start that tack again here, and I would do another tack on the end here to make sure that this doesn't get closed up or overlap, and then I would go over it with a traditional filler technique using the filler wire. So that's what's gonna give you the strength. This just allows you to get started, especially as a beginner, this is the hardest part. You can see the weld is not perfect. This right here is a typical crater that you get when you let off the current very quickly. So there is a little bit of porosity in here. Here's another piece of porosity just when it started. But like I said, I would go over this again with a more traditional welding technique after this is all tacked in place. So let me demonstrate. Just tack that side. Now this is exactly what I was talking about before where this puddle is trying to split into two puddles. See how it's eroding both sides like that? That makes it really hard to get started. And that's why I think this technique is so good as long as we can prevent this. So it could be that there was a little bit of a, too much of a gap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the wire on top and try again. I may have overstretched this when I hammered it out some. So here's a short piece of wire. I'm just gonna lay it right there on top. And we're gonna try that again. So what that's done is it's, it's bridged that puddle together on both sides. So now we have a solid mass to weld on top of. It's really hard when you have two masses and surface tension wants to separate the weld puddle because it's, it's easier for it to be a, like a hot dog as opposed to a round puddle. We want a round puddle and that filler wire just bridged those two hot dogs and made it into a, a round puddle. That's exactly what we want. So, so now that this piece is well tacked together, I'm gonna go over this entire seam from start to finish 
going back to the 29 amps as opposed to the 80. And that's gonna make this a, a very strong weld that I would put on my car. Okay, I made a little mistake on the end, which I'll show you guys. But this one is completely welded all the way down and it's a nice narrow heat affected zone. Not that much warpage in it. It's uh, good to go. It's penetrated on both sides. This is the one I'd put on my car. But having this tacked together and getting it started with an initial mass is really good. The problem I had on this one is towards the end, the heat is much stronger because the mass is much less. There was an end here. So what happened is I wasn't able to let off the current quick enough. I probably should have stopped and started a few times. I tried to do it at one continuous speed, which turns out it blew through. So I can fix it now, but without the variable pedal control, which is what I'm used to, it, makes it, it takes a little bit more practice to get used to the finger trigger. So we'll go ahead and doctor this up real quick and then we'll move on to some, uh, some better interesting shots of this. So I'm not so sure how easy that was for you guys to see what I was doing. It's really difficult to film with the camera on the weld and through the lens and all that. It makes it hard. Um, I have a DSLR camera, so it doesn't quite fit close enough and make it so I can see too. So it's a tough, tough thing to film, but hopefully you got the idea that these quick high bursts of energy can fuse the metal together. And if a gap is too wide, I'm just laying a piece of filler wire over the wide gap and it's kind of bridging it and melting it in as one. Now, you don't want your gaps to be wide. You want them to be zero, if at all possible. But if you're working on a car and you're doing a whole hood or a door skin or something big, chances of it being a little bit off over the course of like three feet is pretty high. So that's where you can try to make it fit as perfect as possible. But in reality, you're gonna have some places with small gaps. I was using 035 wire and I was using um, 065 wire. 065 is like one and a half times the sheet metal thickness. So ideally you want the gap to be one of the thicknesses of metal or less. And that just makes welding easier. And even though you can fill it up with, with wire, you, you really don't want to, if at all possible. So in the areas that you have larger gaps, you can try that technique of, of laying the filler on there and zapping it into place. Now, if it's on a vertical seam or something that gravity is not gonna help you, then you just gotta tape it in and burn it, hopefully get a tack down, and then eventually you go back over it with low current, low travel speed. And that's what really melts it in and gives you the good penetration. Every time I push the trigger, 
my tungsten moves. And so you kind of have to balance that a little bit. This trigger has a pretty strong spring, so you can see it right now. Every time I, I, I pinch it, this moves at least an eighth of an inch. And that, that could get you off center and you have to correct for it. So it does take more practice, but I do like that it's kind of an on off because there's no setting in the machine to just control the duration of the pulse. But the quicker you let go, the quicker it lets off the energy. So I'm just tapping it like that. This method can get you nice tacks that you can kind of go back over and just keep practicing. The more proficient you get, I think the less helpful this tip is because you are going to have to go over it again. So the more proficient you become, the more you can kind of get that, that bead started or that, that puddle started nice and round without having to do these high burst tacks. But this video was made for the beginner, especially with the beginner machine. It absolutely could be a lifesaver and hopefully this gives you enough confidence to just get started. The machines are getting much better. The prices are coming down and the features are going up. So now is I think the time to uh, dive into one of these multi-function welders. If you wanna try out this machine, I will invite you to my house. I do in-person uh, welding workshops. The next one is gonna be September 27th. I'll have this machine here. You're welcome to come try it yourself. The uh, lessons are like eight, eight to five, nine to five, something like that. All day, limited to four people. It's a great group of guys who basically just get better at working on cars and compare projects, bring apart, we fix apart, whatever you wanna do, I can help you with it. And I have this machine, I have a more expensive um, AC machine as well, plus the MIG welder, we can kind of bounce around to different welders and improve your technique. It'll save you hours and hours of frustration. Even if you're a beginner, most of the people who take the classes are beginners. So reach out to me, my email is in my YouTube about section. So if you navigate on the tabs, click the about section, there's some information about the channel and then at the bottom of that is my email address. You just sent me an email. If you wanna make it to this one, great. If not, then I will have other classes. I usually do it like once a quarter. If you can make it out, it's a good dime. I, I guarantee you, you'll be able to uh, do some welding with this machine on day one and get proficient at it. Just takes practice, but if you were having a hard time seeing and you wanna try it yourself, the best thing to do is just get started. The cost is $225. It's pretty inexpensive to uh, invest in yourself and give yourself all the knowledge you need to go back home and fix stuff. On this channel, I use a welder almost like, I think it's like 60% of my videos have a welder in it. If you have any questions about this Endeli welder, I will put a link to it in my description below. And obviously you can leave a comment if you have any questions or you have other, other things I might've missed. Please let me know and we'll help the community out by just discussing it.